Rome 2. What to do if you have an army that consists solely of infantry type units. In all my previous videos I've shown you how to use the cavalry in an active dynamic role to wear down parts of the enemy, uh, to feint with the enemy and to use cavalry as a battle winning element in conjunction with infantry. What happens if you have no cavalry? Here's a setup. I've set up some infantry in hiding in the woods and I've set up a battle line in the center clearly visible with refused extreme flanks left and right. The plan is for the enemy to attack my center I will use my skirmishers to draw them in and they are going to envelop me I'm going to let myself be enveloped and at the point where they have me fully enveloped I'm going to unleash my infantry. Unfortunately the AI in Rome 2 is still very passive and doesn't do anything. So I have to cancel that plan, even though it's a good plan. Uh, I knew, of course, that the enemy cavalry would come around my left flank, but I figured that my general cavalry could go out and deal with that. So new plan is I will create a wedge-like formation with skirmishers in front, and I will attack his center with a wedge. I'll certainly be prepared for that. At the same time, this semi-wedge format is pretty good with a second row of infantry that can act both as a reserve but also cover off my flanks because he has got a lot of cavalry and he will send it around my flanks if I'm not careful. And I want some legionnaires to deal with that. The armies are about the same size. The only difference is the composition. We spent the same amount of money. I think he spent a little bit more than me. It's an Egyptian army. They've got chariots, scythed chariots up front. And uh, that does worry me because these things, I don't know, I have a natural respect for those because they can slice into infantry like no man's business. So I'm cautiously, uh, cautiously advancing my wedge formation here. And now I'm drawing up the right side because I have a plan. So. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that plan while my skirmishers try and wear down some of his skirmishers, his archers and his uh, chariots. One thing that's worth noting is skirmishers in general, these slingers and stuff, have a range of 150 meters. Bowmen, even the Cretan archers that they're using here, mercenary Cretan archers, only have a range of 125. That means, I'm not sure that's actually realistic, knowing you know that longbowmen could shoot uh, arrows up to 300 meters but anyway uh, what it does mean is that the stone throwing skirmishers, skirmishers have an advantage here and I'm going to use that. I'm basically going to annoy his center as much as I can hoping to entice him to attack straight into my line but failing to do that I've set up my line such that I can perform an attack where I will have a line on the far right and then I will have an echelon of infantry units following it up but refused to the left. So basically four units front hitting his right flank and then a diagonal line of infantry going backwards to the left. That what will that accomplish you might ask? It will accomplish two things. First he will pull his units to the right to counter the units that I have impacting his line first. At the same time, it will create a little bit of disarray in his ranks. But as he is pulling his units over towards my right flank, my left flank is going to impact him. And that will create a little bit of numerical superiority where I want it. If I can get away with it, I've created four groups with my leading heirs here, I will use one unit as reserve and I will put that into the gaps created in his lines and if necessary then start uh, micromanaging them inside his line to get flanking positions. You see now at this point he's gotten annoyed with my uh, skirmishers. He sends out his archers into range and at this range his archers will do more damage to me than I'm doing to him. So it's about time that we start attacking. And here we go. He's opened up. He's formed the opening gambit. Unfortunately he has no plan behind his gambit. And there you see my right line moving forward. That's the first group. And then I follow up one by one with the next group aimed for his center. But as I mentioned in a refused line. And here comes the next group. Now this should pull all of his units towards my right flank or certainly 
create a little bit of disorganization in their in the formation. Notice also that I'm passing by my skirmishes. Oh, look at that! The, right, this is this is part of why <laughs> the Romans uh, dominated warfare for about a thousand years. They used their brains, big shields. They're taking fire from archers. They lift their shields over their heads, and they're pretty effective because they are big. So anyway, you see how my skirmishes skirmishes are still effective, whereas he has still got his archers in the front line, and they're basically going to get slaughtered as part of the general carnage. There's the impact. You can see how many units he's pulled over to this flank, and I've got some very very strong units, the legionnaires, tough as nails. I keep saying that, but they are tough as nails. Pelums go in left, right, and centre, and then they follow up with a charge into the close stabbing action with the big shields and the small gladius short swords. They were meant for this kind of work. And you see I've also created a reserve unit, which I'm now sending in to the point where I think I may need some shoring up, or there is a gap where I can get to flank a unit. You see the far right? I've sent a guy out to flank that side. But he's breaking already. So I conflicted here a little bit with my normal maxim, maxim of hitting him with everything simultaneously. At this point I kept 25% of my force back in reserve to make sure that I hit him all over the place and also give me the tactical flexibility to outflank him and so on. Those pelums are deadly. So, there we are this battle is over and even though I had, I had no cavalry I had no tactical flexibility to speak of I still managed to outmaneuver him make his formation act in the way I wanted it to make uh, to act and then push the blade in and hit him in the, s in the guts So I hope you enjoyed this. Give me an idea of what you would like me to do, uh, which types of scenarios, difficult scenarios you would like me to see play out, or which types of tactics you would see me play out. Uh, quite interesting hearing what you guys think of this thing. And until next time, stay frosty.